Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, born today. Merry Christmas. Today, we celebrate. We're celebrating because God has revealed something to us. And the reading for today from Matthew chapter 1 is really a great one for us to meditate on because it highlights a character of Jesus' birth story that is often kind of in the background. He's an important character, but we don't talk about him much, and that's Joseph. And we can learn quite a bit about how God is revealing things to us by looking at Joseph in Matthew chapter 1. Joseph is an example given to us of how God reveals things to his people. And without his revelation, we can't see what God is doing. So in our Old Testament reading, we have King Ahaz, who is a son of David. He's of the line of David, but he's unfaithful. He doesn't want to rely on God. He's a wicked king. And so even when someone is sent saying, seek a sign from the Lord, King Ahaz says no. But Joseph, Joseph is a faithful son of David. For when what God is up to is revealed to him, he responds in faith. What a great example for us to follow. So let's see what we can learn from Joseph this Christmas. Well, see, Joseph comes to conclusions about the situation of the dubious circumstances of his betrothal, shall we say. And he comes to a pretty reasonable conclusion. The woman that he's betrothed to is pregnant, and he knows he didn't do it. So he's left to his own devices, his own reasoning. He comes to the conclusion that pretty much everyone else would, that she must have been unfaithful. But Joseph's a pretty good guy. He tries his best. He's a just man. He doesn't want to unduly shame Mary, and so he resolves to divorce her quietly. See, like Joseph, left to our own devices, we only see what we're able to see using our abilities, our logic, our reasoning, even with the best of intentions. And we miss what God is doing. But thankfully, like with Joseph in Matthew 1, God does not leave us to our own devices. He does not leave us alone in our blindness, in our lack of understanding, but instead, he reveals himself to us. That's always been one of the beautiful things about the Christian faith and the Christian God, is that he doesn't wait around for us to love him and to get it, but rather, because of his love for us, he makes the journey down to us, to reveal himself to us to us, to inform us what he's up to. Well, God's revelation always brings surprising and wonderful news, and in this case, Joseph, after he's made his resolution based on his own reasoning that something's up here, and I think that something is wrong, and so I'm going to do my best to do what I can in the situation. Does that sound familiar to any of you? Ever felt that way about a situation? You're not really sure what to do, not really sure what to say, and so you just do the best you can and hope that it works out. Well, you're right there with Joseph. That's what he's doing. He's found himself in a difficult situation. But God doesn't leave Joseph to his own devices. He doesn't leave Joseph blind to the situation. He sends an angel of the Lord. He appears to Joseph in a dream while he sleeps to inform him that, in fact, it is not that his wife has been unfaithful, but that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, that she is actually a servant of God and bearing that role out faithfully. And this child is no mere child but the Son of God, the fulfiller of the prophecy in our Old Testament of Emmanuel, and his name is to be called Jesus. Today, we celebrate this very revelation. 
this very news that God has decided in love and grace and mercy to share with those of us like Joseph, who by our own strength and our own reasoning can only see a small part of the picture. And that small part has led us down a wrong way, just like it did with Joseph. And yet God, in his mercy, reveals a truth, shines a light. Your betrothed has not been unfaithful. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for God is on the move. Has that ever happened to you? That God has brought to your attention something that you were blind to before? Despite your best efforts, despite trying to do all that you can, just like Joseph, He's trying to make the best of a bad situation, or so he thinks. And then God comes along and reveals himself to us. He sends word, his word, to open our eyes to the truth of the situation. You see, without God, without the joy of Christmas, without the grace and mercy and love displayed in the incarnation we celebrate tonight, our world is a world of despair. And sometimes we give in to that despair. Sometimes our failures or the difficult situations that we encounter, like Joseph, threaten to overwhelm us and lead us down a wrong path. But just like with Joseph, God doesn't leave us to our own devices. And so he's revealing something to you tonight. That his son Jesus is born. And that he's here for you. He's revealing that God hasn't abandoned you. He's revealing that the world isn't ruled by cruelty and sin. He's revealed that God isn't a cruel judge, but a gracious judge and loving God, desiring the redemption and restoration of his people. How do I know this? Well, God has revealed it to us in his word. In our epistle reading, it says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loves us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation means the full atoning sacrifice for our sins. God is on the move. God is on the move for you. He's on the move in grace and mercy and love, for he wishes to redeem and save his people. God's word reveals his plan to us tonight, just like he did to Joseph all those years ago. Well, maybe not exactly the same, unless any of you had a dream last night where an angel of the Lord came to you and told you all of this stuff. But the Greek word that angel comes from means messenger. An angel is just somebody sent with God's word to tell the person that he wants to hear what he has to say. And as Christians in his church, we have many messengers that are bringing us the word of God. We just read them in the scriptures. That Jesus, born this day in the city of Bethlehem, is the fulfillment of all the hopes of the people of God. The rescuer, God with us, who's going to save us from our sins. We have one more thing that we can learn from Joseph in our Christmas story tonight. God's revelation to Joseph creates a change in Joseph. See, before the angel of the Lord is sent to Joseph, he's resolved his mind. It says that, right? He's resolved to divorce Mary quietly. But then God's revelation comes to light And it turns out that God is at work in his son, which is in Mary's womb, conceived from the Holy Spirit. And the angel says, do not be afraid. 
to take her as your wife. And then upon waking from this dream, Joseph does what he is commanded to, to do. See, God's word produced a change in Joseph. It revealed the truth to him, and he responded in faithful obedience. He takes Mary as his wife. And when the child is born, he names it Jesus. God's revelation of his plan is prompting us to respond in faith as well. After all, that's how we believe faith works. It's created by the Holy Spirit from hearing God's word, from his revelation to us. It allows us to turn to him away from what we had previously resolved to do, just like Joseph. And so having this revelation, which we celebrate tonight, that our God is a God of grace and mercy and love, so much so that he sent his only son to be born in the flesh, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We heard that revelation tonight. We've heard it before, and we're going to hear it again. And when we do, we turn from our sin that's been revealed to us, and we look to his mercy, the mercy that is now incarnate in Jesus. We turn from placing hope in ourselves and our own reason and abilities and strengths. We put our hope in Jesus, our Savior, born this day. We turn from despair to hope because God has revealed to us that he is not a God that is far off. He is not a God that doesn't understand our suffering. He is not a God that does not love us. But he has come to gather us to himself, for he greatly desires to be with us, to redeem us and restore us. That's all that's wrapped up in the name Jesus. Jesus is the Greek word from the Hebrew that we get Joshua from, Yeshua, which means the Lord is salvation. That's what the name of Jesus means. That's why, I don't know why it never hit me this way before, but this year, for some reason, it really hit me that God makes a particular ask, a command, that the child be named Jesus. Because he wants those who know him to know what he's here to do. To save his people from their sins. And notice that language is specific. He's not just here to forgive the sins that you've done up to this point or to give you a blank slate to start over with again, and now you've got to live a better life. He's come to save his people, a full restoration bought with the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. The Lord himself has given the sign, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Dear friends in Christ, tonight we celebrate. It is an evening of joy because Jesus is born. God is with us, and he is here to save you from your sins. Rejoice, O people of God. Your salvation is nigh. Jesus is here. At God's revelation, our eyes are opened and we turn to him. We turn to him in repentance. We turn to him in hope. For he is born and his name is Jesus. Merry Christmas. And may the peace of God revealed in the birth of Jesus this very night, God in the flesh among us, guard your hearts and minds in the peace that is won by our Savior. Christ child who has descended in the flesh today until that same Jesus returns in glory to make all things new. In the name of Jesus. Amen.